I'm ready to see the conclusion of the series, and I'm pretty sure everyone else is too. Yeah, I've wanted to be the one talking over that music for a long while now, and I still barely get my chance here. I love the new sounds that we've got here Sorry, on the man. road to Rio. <laughs> It's all good, Trace, man. I didn't want to interrupt you in the just, flow of things. Would have been very jarring if I just cut you off in the opening of the show. You know what, Trace? Yeah, actually, well, I that's got this the thing one. about cutting people off, Harry. Sometimes <laughs> it's on, you. I'm going to let you finish. Okay. Well, actually, I think you guys have both made some very compelling points there. However, I think when we look towards the decisive say in how to cut someone off, we'd be looking more towards a man like Magis, perhaps, as he tries to cut off this top B control for an IP. They've got a three man stack over here at this side of the map. Astralis not looking to go to that B-bomb site. Instead, it grouping up in alt mid and apartments and now looking like they want to try and establish some control over here towards A with just Rez and Lecro back here in the bomb site. How long do NIP keep this three-man stack at B? Well, now's probably the time to reconsider as Utility starts flying into the A site. Astralis is going to drop pit side. Lecro fighting with a USP. He's going to be favored at this range, but there are more players coming at him by the second. Magisk only needs one as he uh, pile drives both, play both players inside the site and gets a plan. even checks the back because it felt too easy for Astralis. Only two kills. That's strange. And here's the long rotation now afforded by NIP with that triple B setup. It's going to leave them basically locked out of the round. Of course, you know, you may as well go for this, but chance of you winning it is pretty low. Actually, I'd say if you're NIP, just full save here. Twist gets a free armor upgrade. Nork saves a kit nade. Props gets good utility. This is actually an okay save for NIP, as weird as that one is on the pistol round. And you know you ain't winning it versus Astralis. Twist is risking his life to stay around this position. The bomb might even take his armor away if the bullets don't, and they will. They'll kill him in one. So device finding that kill. And I, I would have liked to just see the armor get saved, because you, you're surely going to force here if you're on IP into the second CT round of this map. But Astralis, five alive at the end of things. That is exactly what the doctor ordered. Yeah, now coming into Inferno, Whoa. one yeah, now device, come on, man. Get it together. Come on. You used to be such a nice guy. And now look. <laughs> but I guess that's what only ever winning does to you. One and oh up for Astralis in this game as they take the pistol. Reinvestment back in from NIP as they try and toe the line with this force buy in this round. Now, an early three-man stack over at the B-bomb site, and they do rain some nades down through Banana early on. Nork has held on to his, so be sure to keep an eye on that. Still a chance for some more damage output from these HE grenades. Nork offers one up with the Deke. There's that grenade, and that finds a lot of damage onto Device. A good return on investment, and Nork is starting to look like that as well in terms of his performance in the server. Second kill in this round, and that might be enough to send Astralis away from Ooh. B. Dupree gets dinked through the smoke by that UMP on Twist, and that has sent Astralis back into the realm of this A-bomb site. Armed with only one smoke on the back of Zipex, that gets thrown out over here towards Moto in an attempt to cut off the angles available to these players in rotation. And that leaves Astralis with a very, very temporary three on two inside of the bomb site. Yeah, temporary is key though, because NIP still have twist on that long corner who's coming in from the library. Astralis are taking their time. They don't want to overcommit. And that's why Twist is hesitating with his rotation. He's making sure they're not wrapping B as well through the spawn. That's not the case. Astralis do want to commit towards his A-side plant with a crossfire and a low player. Easy said than done. There's the contact made. Twist is going to bait them in and Rez is going to do the dirty, do the damage from the site. Doing the dance right now. He can't find a shot. Zipnix and Dupree with the SMGs making it happen. And Dupree's traded for a one-on-one. -on -one. Fake plant with 10 seconds left up. He needs to stick it. His opponent too far away to stop this bomb from going down. Dupree won't get the gun from the body of device. He's just got to fight with the SMG and he's going to push for it as well. Oh, oh it's my. close. Dupree, though. Not going to be able to close the round. Got to give a second opportunity away, and he'll take it this time. AK should be back behind him on the balcony, but he's not going to get there in time. Listen, Regardless, that's a, a huge round for Astralis, considering at one point that was a three on two. When you're loaded three like Dupree, it, it doesn't matter, all right? He's jacked. And not only that, he's got this AK maybe next round. Yeah, I mean, you know, hangs with the freshest dudes, or, you know, eats at the coolest restaurants. Nobody's really doing that this day and age. No. Hell, they're not even really hanging out with the freshest dudes. No. They're good. 
Luckily, you get to hang out with the freshest dudes every every day, Trace. Yeah, now. Henry, Chad, and Alex. Obviously, <laughs> we do get to see them sometimes. Yeah, because I was thinking, like, you guys call yourself the freshest dudes, and then there's, I don't know, it's just something about those hygiene habits you guys have developed. Anyway, back into the round we go. The ninjas in pajamas here with pistols, Harry. I actually wash my hands so much that they are, like, uh, dry and like Yeah, all, 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 like, I think, yeah, like cracked on the back. It's awful. It's uh, like the let's desert see. floor. <laughs> I'm like something out of a Joji music video. But uh, device opening this round up with the Mac 10. Pretty much just the shutdown here from Astralis, as it always should have been. A bit more damage than perhaps Dupree was ready for, and he's not able to escape the might of these USPs. But it's only a Mac 10 given over. You really don't care about that if you're Astralis. Ooh. Glaive's not even interested in making money. He's got the UMP, but he doesn't want to risk reloading. He doesn't want to give away his position here, so he's just rocking out with the Glock out. And there is a team ace from Astralis. Everyone pulling their weight equally in that round there. Reinvestment now, or I guess just first investment from NIP as they put this buy up on the board. And most notably, we're going to have that AWP over in Twist's hand straight away. Now, speaking of Alex, Chad, and Henry, they will be in for the final game of the day featuring Jinji and Cloud9 right here on this stream. So that'll be the next best of three coming your way. And that is in the NA region. They'll be covering that. Surely they're driving here now, maybe even watching. Who knows? Device get a Molotov out early, trying to contest some of this B control that it looks like Ninja's Pajamas want to grasp firmly. Meanwhile, Dupree, he's not stopping anytime soon. He's really gone for it here, and that's landed him right in the crosshair. The twist. Whoa, messy. Yeah. That's the bomb dropped. They're going to run through a smoke with it. Yeah, not a clean one for Astralis, but still a recoverable round. They wanted 2 1 4 before. But just though, might lose his life to the orb. Oh my, he's standing tall and he's done damage to Twist as well. Grenade bounces back, does nothing. The Molotov, oh, it's gonna get smoked. Lecro stalling, Twist peeks with the flash. That's a very proactive play. And while it was risky, it did provide a reward. Device with a tuck and Twist think, thinks it's clear. He could be further from the truth. Device is dead to Nork though on the rotate. And that will still be around for NIP. They pick it up after all and save the orb, so. Yeah. Now, Knock brought on as AWP player alongside a twist. You know, they they do this whole back and forth thing with it, but Knock really steadfast with it. He's proved his worth in this nip lineup, as we talked about a little while ago. And he does not want to see this series end here on Inferno with an L. As Twist taking this orb then, fighting mid side. He's even going to go for a bit of a contact play as well. That's dangerous, but he gets an ult fight and does drop Dupree early with a Mac 10. Backing up safely with an advantage. Good grenades as well. NIP double nade Astralis down banana. And look at the health. Look at the damage. Popsky's still here as well with even more utility to keep throwing in the face of Astralis, not letting them take control towards a banana. But obviously, not enough util to stall out the entire round time. Eventually, NIP will have to give Astralis some room to maneuver. And that's what the bomb is as well. Easy does it here for Astralis. Slowly but surely up through Banana they come. And there are still two players lying in wait to try and deal with them. Now, this B side of the map, you will note that both Nork and Twist still have their smokes up, and that's something that's going to not bode well for Astralis looking to take in this B bomb site. They have to go ahead and commit through these defensive smokes. Nork barrels through the CT one, but Plopsky, who is up in this boost, delivers the trade required to keep this more than in favor of NIP. A bomb plant locked in for Astralis at the very, very Ooh. least, and a late boost oh. back up. Into CT, nets them all the kills required to get a handle back on this B site and put a second on the board for an IP. Looks that way. Yep, taking the fight to him, good stuff. AWP remains in twist hands. Someone's going to be dropping knock, and they're going to continue on. Plopsky. As you can see right there, I really love that. I mean, it's been up here for a little bit now, but I, I do love this impact player thing. Good stuff. Good baseline of information for all you cool cats and dogs out there. 
Well, it's an eco now for Astralis. So they've got to take a bit of a breather, a bit of a beating as NIP have come back into this game from the 3-0 lead. That's Peace. a hell of a shot. Glaive finding Popsky at top sandbags is traded, but trades in a round like this are excellent for Astralis. I mean, trades on the T side are, are great anyway. Four on four, that's a dink, but it's not a kill. And Rez will get a chance to back up into the site. Let this AK instead come to life. Let grow from the balcony. Strauss is going to go long side instead, and they actually might run into Rez and try and finish the job. But Flash is good. They actually do Tuck mm. and Majisk. Great shot. Wild Blind finds Rez. Trade is in, and Lekro can clean up this round, you would think, with only one man still standing. Zipnik's actually going to get a bomb plant. And oh dear, he might not have a gun, but this guy's Clutch Minister for a reason. He's able to get out of the sight, too. He's going to try to wrap all the way around, it looks like. Really cognizant there could be a player coming up middle. But they're both coming from library in the form of knock a twist, walking their way into the site, clearing it in tandem. They're gonna tap the bomb, not stick it. Zip X goes for the peak, lands one on a midair, shot on a knock. But as the story is told, Twist is gonna go recover this AWP and get a defuse in with ease. We're gonna see a tie game here, three to three. Excellent eco, though. That's what you need to remember. Astralis didn't even have Kevlar in that round. They just had pistols and a, a couple of flashbangs and Zinix. He makes it a one-on-one. -on -one. He makes it a bomb plant for Astralis, and that's going to give them so much money moving forward. So uh, that was still a great round for the Danes. Another important factor is they take away all the AKs, right? NIP had two or three AKs in that round because of all the, the CT rounds they w uh, won coming up to this point. And uh, now they're forced to save the AWP, and they lose all the guns. So... That's something for Astralis. They don't have to worry about those one-shot headshots anymore. Uh, they are going to be armed to the teeth as well. Twist spotting for the mid cross with this AWP. Mm -hmm. Tries to catch the timing into alt mid. Not going to see any action there as he does bow on out. Probably the right decision to make as well. Device here hidden in this defensive smoke. Looking to go springing out when this disappears, and they have since retreated away from Banana, so Device isn't going to find anything for his troubles. But with top Banana control taken, Astralis already with quite the foothold here on this map, and for the time being, there's a chance at nice. a three-on-one here at the B-bomb site. Nork is very much alone. He does drop a smoke down into CT, and in the meantime, Rez has delivered a kill over here onto Dupree down in mid. This leaves an IP a man up, and so suddenly this decision to have four players stacked at A doesn't make all too much sense anymore. They rotate a man back, actually two players at that. Twist moving on in as well to join Plopsky and Nork here at the B-bomb site. And the timing on this Ooh. could not be better for NIP and could not be any worse for Astralis. They try and group up, they try and get in. Plopsky lands some damage in through the smoke. Now with an AWP firing out from CT, it's a bait and switch. They believe they know where both the B site players are, but there's not just two, there's a third. And that man was up on the boost in the form of Plopsky. He's taken this round by storm. And it is just Magisk left. 15 seconds, gonna try and bow out of the round. Look to hold on to the AK and IP. They might let him get away. But a fourth on the board and a flawless one at that. A chance to upgrade onto AKs yourself if you're an IP. They're feeling very, very happy with how that one panned out. Yeah, so much damage through the smoke in that round. And most importantly, right, you, you mentioned it, they rotate for NIP, they send four on A, they have Nork playing alone in the spawn. Astralis, their initial grenade uh, goes over the wall and, and hits Nork in spawn. And then Astralis set up a full Molotov execute. We saw the, the overhead view from Bastion. Everything was mollied, everything was on fire. But where are NIP? Playing outside the site. So none of the utility Astralis throws has any bearing on the round. And the smokes, if anything, just give free damage to NIP. Astralis can't see a thing and they're just getting tagged in through the uh, through the walls. So yeah, that's an unfortunate round for NI uh, for Astralis, but well played by NIP. Yeah, for Nock, he, you know, he found himself at about 49 HP. If they were able to capitalize on that, Astralis can run in the site all day from the looks of it. But by the time that rotation comes in, man, we're going to see the barrel out into the middle area. Majisk with the trade on the res. It's all a little short-lived, though. Bomb still back towards T-spawn. Looks like Astralis want to grab themselves some kills, potentially forcing some weapons out of the hands of Nip. Look at this gamble. They've fully left B. They've completely left it open. Now, this is a good gamble because why, why would Astralis contact play the B site in the three on four? They shouldn't. They should be grouping to play together to, to whatever they do, do as a three-man unit. 
that's how you get out of these rounds. So Plomsky's playing very passive, but I, if anything, I'm not really a fan of this. I understand because he's given up B, he doesn't want to run in like it's empty, but he could get to the ruins, he could get to coffins, but instead, Astralis, all they need to do is throw this smoke and they've got the B site and, and NIP, yeah, they have a man up, retake should be no problem, but you don't want to give Astralis his liberties and the gamble on the full rotate for NIP didn't really prove to be necessary. So now it's up to them to retake. This hero AK on device has been spotted. Plant's going to be afforded. Popsky looking for fights. A good grenade onto Glaive does inhibit him during the plant. Device has found the first, though, in the post plant. And now it's where things get difficult for NIP. Yeah, Electro trying to come up through Banana. He's going to be late to this site, and that gives some time Ooh. where these players here for Astralis can look to do damage. And they spring on out. They deal with Nork. Suddenly, Lecro thrown into a clutch, has dealt with the first man. Dupree hiding in pool on the other side of this smoke, and Lecro has no idea, blindsided by the Magic Man himself, and a fourth on the board for Astralis. They get it done with the pistols, another round where they're able to find success on the back of it. Last time, it was a bomb plant, but a, uh, but a round victory for an IP. This time, bomb plant and the victory for Astralis. They tie yeah. it up at four to four. And now really looking to bring the heat. They're at a pretty critical point in this game, right? Because you win that you win that uh, pistol round, and now you bring an IP into that same spot you found yourself in economically, and you've got a chance to reset them, which for the CT side carries a lot of weight here. And that is entirely due to the fact that NIP you know, over-rotate because of Astralis' far second mid play. So leaving P open does have its consequences after all. Device is dead, and he knows it. He's been really risking it playing this close. They've been hitting him in the smoke, and, and this time a grenade grenade hits him in the face and so they they know for sure he's stuck because once a grenade hits you you are unable to move for about a second and what's i mean more of a bug than a feature i think i'm not a fan well i think that's one of the few things that this game really needs like patching right now like one of the the i want to say only problems because i feel like cs is in a really good place right now in terms of the bugs they're pretty limited our smokes have been fiddled with we're in a good spot apart from those grenades i will be bringing them up until they get fixed. But right now, this site looks fixed in favor of Astralis. They've got an entry. Plopsky's here on the oranges, and he is going to get one, maybe a double before he gets dropped. The orb posted up for twist is already getting tagged on the repeat. So Astralis getting the plant and a two on three. We again see them in these post plant positions, and they can close out these kind of rounds, especially with such a similar beta switch setup. The Molotov denying more for NIP, and they've smoked off. Uh, one of these players here, Zipnix, is going to have to do this alone. Yeah, important to bear in mind the sheer amount of utility still available to NIP, right? With these Molotovs, with these smokes, they can try and cut Astralis out of the round, but none of them getting thrown, and now they do. That's going to divide this hold of Dupree and Zipex, and Dupree is left to fend for himself. They do get on the bomb. Zipex trying to Ooh. deny, and he can't find the kill. NIP grab that defuse literally from under Dupree's nose. The fifth on the board. And Astralis kicking themselves that that one eludes them. Would have been an impressive two on three, however, though, when you do take into account just how much more firepower and kind of options were available to NIP as a result of that utility they held on to. Yeah, very important. They smoked off ruins as well, right? Astralis want those ruins fights. They want the, the player at the back, Zitnix, to bait them into Dupree, who's going to get the kill on, on, on the close corner. So NIP smoke there, forces Astralis to play the coffins, and that choke point is not as favorable for them. 5-4, and IP hold the lead by the skin of their teeth, but this is certainly showing what we wanted in terms of being a neck-and-neck -neck game, a close series. Neither team is clearly ahead of things right now. It's nice to also see Rez uh, performing in this map. He was really having a rough time on Nuke. 4-18 and 18 at the end of things here. He's 6-6 six and six right now, so good position to be in. And that's a great start as well. Plopsky dropping Glaive down Banana, and IP will just bail with that one. They've been very keen to give up Banana, and even B at times, so... Of course, it's going to be no fear to fall off with, a, uh, with an early advantage, even a rotate coming back towards A. So Plopsky is on his own on the B site, but that might not be a problem for the time being. Astralis are elevating the pace. They've taken middle, and they're about to commit to this A spot. Yeah, they smoked off long, and this leaves him an avenue into CT, but Nork is holding for exactly this. 
Dupree and Zipex going to try and slip on it through. Ooh. Knock not able to hold the line. This opens up the mid to be split. And that's what's going to happen. Astralis peel off from the bottom of mid. Now, NIP are quick to re-aggress, take this top mid control and get the information yeah, that it barrel. is a mid to be. But Plopski gets spotted and dealt with over at the B-bomb Ooh. site. That is a very important kill from Letcro. His fast flank is enabled thanks to the retaking of top mid from Nip. And now a three on three is available to the Swedes. A real chance to make something happen in this round. All three players grouped up at Banana. And a smoke holding them back, buying precious time for Astralis. Uh -oh. This Molly could find Dupree. He gets tagged in at once, so he's still alive, still kicking, and still a problem to the Nip squad. Magisk at the back of the site, trying to hold the line. Nip, they get in. Well, they get down. As Magisk sends them packing, this round is going to draw to a close. No time left for Nip. Twist just tries to hold on to this AWP, and he will get away at the very, very least. Yeah, excellent round for Astralis. Zipnix as well. He is very slow to come through Speedway, but it works wonders. Popsky picks a very precarious position, a very dangerous one. And because he's looking left and right, his banana is open. He's, he's checking both sides. His barrel of his gun is poking out. And Zipnix just wall bangs him out of that corner. So good awareness from Zip. Always going to be the guy for Astralis finding those cheeky positions. And... Popsky doesn't get away with it today. I like this spot, I like the idea, but you've got to commit to one side if you're going to run that, because otherwise, well, we see what happens. Twist with a saved orb. He's got it all to do, and not much around him either. Does jump on that cross, spots a couple of players down bottom mid, but I mean, that's where Astralis are meant to be, so no surprises here. Could see a boost up on the corner, but... Astralis are waiting. Device has been a nuisance in this smoke, but that's a USB kill from Nork. Certainly not what they expected. Device has gone through, and he knows there's not the weaponry to hold him down. First kill for Astralis goes the way of Device. And there's three more inside of the site. He is just eco-farming right now. He doesn't know there's a crossfire here, though, and this could catch him off guard. Missed shots. Lecro is going to get it. Rez has been dropped from the coffins. Glaive cleaning up the round, and Twist is too far away with a saved orb. It might not get it saved after all. He's trying to stop the bomb from crossing, though, so Dupree needs to come in on this wrap round to take him down. Where is Dupree? What's what's he looking at? Does he think he's in the site? Saving, I guess? Not going to be the case. Like, either he's crashed or he really no, thinks he he's just, in the site. He just moved. Yeah, he's he still he's there. In the site. Dupree, <laughs> frozen in time. An unexpected <laughs> chronicles that we'll be releasing soon. Pending the proper investments. <laughs> Oh, it's and now clear. he realizes, man, I really thought he was here. <laughs> Dupree's like, what? Nah. Where's he gone? Hang on, maybe he's, he's gone eight. long. Nah, he's probably gone library. Hang on a moment. Wait. No, wait. Hang on, he's not. Wait. No. Guys, care CC here. You know, you don't. Hang on. You don't, you don't think he's gone to B, do you? Is he going no. for it? Wait, no. Where? Hang guys, on. Stay with Bob. Stay with Bob. Right, guys, I'm finding him. Hang on. He's, it, he was all. Is that him? No, oh, hang on. Oh, dear, dude. What? Whoa, whoa, Dupree. Why are we Get doing that? Get that off the screen. Get that off the screen. Dupree, family show, man. Family show. Sixth round on the board for Astralis. Yeah, the orb gets away. Twist, well played. Well played there from Twist, but that's not the only thing that we're looking at. Honestly, we're going to go ahead and pull up our handy-dandy Telestrator right here, and this is something Gosh, that we just anymore. ran into here for back. Astralis. Actually, uh, <laughs> trying to get Twist inside of this b well. Let's take a well, look at this execute as it stands, here. and we're going to pause it right about here. Now, you can see that the Molotovs have actually landed in places that are very pivotal in terms of clearing it out if you're on the T side. Now, Plopsky smoked off as the first smoke that comes in from Astralis. The big hindrance here for Astralis is, if we continue to play this out, the fact that they come over here and they try to aggress. Now, the problem is, this Molotov here thrown by the CT, that was never going to happen. They get stopped dead in their tracks, and Nip hold them to it. Yeah, nice stuff from Trace there. Gets us into the action exactly as we were meant to be. We arrive on time. And, yeah, a good example of, of how, you know, Astralis, they may have these smoke executes, they may have great utility, but NIP could do a good job of countering it. They stall it out, they play retake, they play outside the site, and they will pick it up. So... Close game indeed, but Astralis leading on the T side and looking to extend that by one. Plopsky on two points of health. And he might not be here for long either. Ooh. Nice shot. 
Got to be really careful with the Molotovs, though, on this low health. It can really tick over and take you down. Twist has a molly of his own. He's just separated Estralis. He's pushed them into his very waiting arms, and he's got himself a couple. We'll drop the final man for the Balk, and NIP are going to get up to six here on the CT side. Low HP, no problem. Yeah, this has been such a back and forth, such a neck and neck game. And we haven't really had that moment where one of these teams has pulled ahead in any big fashion just yet. A confident looking sixth there from NIP as they find everything required to make that round a reality. And now going into this one, Astralis back in with a bite. But if they lose this one, they will be down to an eco. And while we haven't had a team pull ahead in a big way yet, it could happen if this round does not go in favor of the Danes. Already a one for one trade immediately over at Top Banana, but that's something that Astralis aren't too worried about. They'll take this four on four, knowing that now applies that much more pressure to NIP in terms of how they divvy up these defending players. And right now they've elected for a three-man hold over towards the A-bomb site, leaving Plopsky to try and lock down Banana on his own. Astralis do actually start to rotate Dupree back from mid. Before that, though, he drops a smoke over towards Long, throws a bunch of utility into the top of middle. Whoa. Plopsky has to hold this B site alone, and he's done a great job thus far, dropping the bomb, finding himself a fourth in the round, and solidifying that seventh on the board for NIP. No money in the Astralis bank accounts, and so this is where the Swedes can look to get ahead. So this, is, this has been so back and forth on Inferno, and that has certainly created a good game, right? What it's also done is broken Astralis' money after two rounds in a row from Nip. They're not going to be able to afford here. They've got an eco for the last round of the half. No better way to do it. Don't want to force here in, you know, anticipation of, of going for an eight round half. That's just unrealistic. Six is fine on the T side, and you're working for a seventh in the next. Now, one thing that is worrying, well, not, no, no, sorry, I'm going to rephrase it. Not worrying, but a factor. Uh, Astralis, when they're on this map in, in, in you know, usual form, 56% uh, 50 of the rounds they convert are T-sided rounds. So if they have a better T-side than CT-side, it's in fact the direct opposite for NIP, 56% on the CT-side. So right now, you would imagine Astralis are hoping for a little bit more in this half, but it won't be here, it won't be now. It will be in number 15 where they aim for seven. Look at this entourage of T's as well. They're just going to group together. Oh dear, whiffed shots from Nork. That gives an opening. That gives a path to B, but Plopsky comes in from spawn and doesn't let them get much further. Again, NIP completely giving up the B site because they have all the info in the world. They know Astralis are trapped here in middle. Uh, Magisk, a very similar situation as well. Walking to his very death. He's been spotted, he's been cleaned up, and it's a flawless five alive round for NIP. Last of the half here, and Astralis' chance for seven, as we were saying. That is the case. That last round really has crept up. Series that had two maps go 16-12. Maybe this one will give us a little bit of the same. Well, we had an 8-7 half run IP back on Nuke and a 9-6 half run IP back on Vertigo. They've won out every half thus far, and this one is no different. So we just have to see which it's more akin to. Rez is getting spammed. Oh, well, he's just about alive, Ooh. isn't he? Just barely <laughs> gets back into the site. But one man who's not so lucky is old mate Plopsky over towards Banana. They're going to set up utility to pop Astralis up top B. They've had trouble getting this position with uh, some of the smokes NIP have thrown. Device has often been hiding inside, but right now, oh, that's a killer of a nade. Yeah, NIP, that one didn't feel good. Yeah, they are triple set on B and a four on five. This is a risk for NIP, but it is the perfect call to make right now. Astralis, they throw their execute again, but they're walking into a stack. Rez has got the first twist, tries to push the smoke. He is really out on a limb here. Rez spamming from CT. You can stop them from crossing the release, make it expensive and painful to do so. Device has to clear the back of the site, and he turns right as he gets to the corner. Nork has dropped all two. Right. The bombs are the ground. The man is trying to trade. He's all that stands for Astralis in this clutch, and he only has a second before that. CT smoke fades. Yeah, he's going to try to get this bomb planted in 1v2 with 7 HP. He's got his work cut out for him. Twist, also low, but for the time being, Ninjas of Pajamas are not going to pressure this too much. That op is just set up and, and spawn. It's not going to actually land. And it's Twist now. 
Ooh. trying to stop this bomb plant. Magist unaware nice. where Lecro is. And a nice little shot there from Magist to make this even numbers. He's got to know now. He's got to know. He taps it once more. 14 seconds left on the clock. He's convinced oh. that this player is coming from construction. Now the jig is up, but now so is the time. They are running slow, and they are running low. Majest looks for the oh. shots. Almost does it. Starts to change. Welcome back to the SL1 Road to Rio. Ninjas in pajamas currently up 9 6. A lot riding on this pistol round, isn't that right, Harry and Hugo? You are correct, Trace. And boy, do Astralis know it. Look at this investment. Dupree's been given a CZ with his armor. Majisk has done that while buying a nade. And that's not the only nade you're going to see in play as NIP, sorry, Astralis have a full stack of utility on two players. Let's see where these grenades do end up. I can imagine down banana. Which just plays in the spawn for that fast rotation, and Zipnix is going to flash glaive into a fight. A dangerous decision. He had a full belt of util, and he goes for an engagement, and he's lost all of that. So that's a real risk, and there is no reward. There is only a casualty at the top of Banana. Ouch. 
Yeah, that's just devastating, right? Like, you may as well have not bothered putting that $800 into the round on, after that being the opening result. And IP sat a man up. They start to work a player in towards the apartments. That's Nork. Dupree hasn't seen this yet. And Astralis are actually going to start to consider pushing mid. It started to look like Dupree was going to aggress there, and now he certainly might. Nork still here in the B apartments, and a rotation coming around over towards the B bomb site. A nice shot from Dupree, but he is dinked down in response. This is going to cause the rotation of device back around towards this A side of the map. They bypass Dupree. They get by him, and he's not able to find anything. But no one's watching short. Dupree's allowed to swing back out, and he removes himself. Another device does get dinked. Another man brought down low. But thus far, all these players that have been tagged up have still been looking good. Dupree is about to get wrapped onto. Oh, and he does hmm. get dealt with by Plopski. It's the duel of two HP players, and Plopski comes out on top. Rez and Twist now in a two-on-two. -two. They know that Zipex is over here short side. They're trying to win the fight onto Magisk, and they manage it. Zipex, good for one, but not able to win it out in the clutch. NIP, they grab themselves the pistol. They're going to go 10-6 up. Ooh, this is spicy now. Like, if Astralis want to win their game, this game, they are really going to have to come back. There's no more third maps in the series. This is it. This is all to play for, and Astralis uh, an okay first half on the T side and then a pistol loss. Well, that has spiced things well and truly up. So let's see if they can you know, do the dirty. Because again, I'm still holding out for it, but NIP are looking really, really good, right? And there's no weak link. There's no you know holes in the attack right now. Everyone's performing. Rez is having a good game, although he's been triple naded. He avoids the third one. And the third one is the one that matters most in this instance. Down to 20 health, he's going to swap out guns, take a Galil team player as Astralis have forced the issue. They're playing that smoke delay play. And I love this from Astralis. The reason being is we're 30 seconds into the round. They have yet to throw a smoke. So these are really going to stall NIP out if they keep them up for so long like they're doing. Glaive. Ooh, got to be careful. Now we might see the first one go down. And it's going to be Zipnix as well. Important you communicate when you're in the situation uh, who's throwing the smokes because you don't want two to go out at once. That's a huge waste. And at this level, NIP are going to hear two smokes bloom and they're going to know what's up. So first is down. Minute on the clock. Second is gone at the A site as well. So keep that in mind. They've rotated device over because he's lost his utility. And so Astralis have two left towards the mid position. That's where the bomb is going. And I think NIP are going to be able to get ahead of this utility with about 20 seconds left. Yeah, we're relying on Dupree and Magisk here to deliver with these pistols. Re-smoke's going down. This smoke delay play. Gonna give Astralis the results they were hoping for. NIP have got to commit through these smokes and they need these kills. They will get both of them. For the remaining three over on the Astralis side, it will just be a save in this round. An 11th on the board for NIP. And Astralis not even allowed to attempt this one. All in all, you know, you think about like the, the kind of context of that site take there and the fact that, you know, there was the chance of this smoke delay play from Astralis. Ultimately, Everything kind of went the way they wanted it to. You know, NIP did have to commit through the smokes. They wasted so much time that they were very effective, at least, in, you know, forcing an IP to go through. But none of the shots connecting, or at least all the shots connecting for an IP, right? They just overwhelmed the pistols, not phased by the attempt. And now 11 on the board for the Swedes. Yeah, those are the saves that you're not really happy with if you're Astralis, right? Like, yeah, okay, you know, we got guns out. Like, sure, we, we saved some Kev and some utility, but look at the score. 11-6, and you're forcing Astralis to save, and they're forced by in the second round. NIP are well and truly in the driver's seat of this series, of this game, and of this map. They may have run out of ideas on the T side of Nuke, but this third one is far better. So Astralis, another eco before the guns come through in the fourth round of the half. And this is where NIP once again come back in with MAC-10s and look to make some money. Dupree's got a Zeus. Trace, get your... Get my yeah. Zeus ready. Get your Zeus here. ready. Oh, yeah, okay, get yeah. yours out. <coughs> it is on right. me, unfortunately. Here we go. Plopsky's going to lead the charge in here for the nip side. He's going to find an easy kill onto Device. Deve is out. 
There's still three players here, though, so they're walking into what little bit of a stack Astralis have left. It's just playing from the coffin. Zipex back at second. Oranges and a great shot from Glaive, who is also on the scene. Now, weirdly enough, he takes that shot, starts to fall back. But he's not the only one. Nip have fallen back as well. They're going to start to posture and look towards this top mid area. Here we go. Am I going to get it? Am I going to nail this? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, the grenade killed the chicken. Not wow, the chicken. this is... No! Oh, this what? is brutal. How has it all fallen apart? A Zeus kill from Dupree, and this round's been thrown into chaos. Glaive looking to cement this round with four kills on the oh, back of just baby. a 5-7 in armor. Beautiful. And of course he does. Astralis, they steal that round wow. away. Put a seventh on the board when they definitely shouldn't have gotten away with it. And now an IP in with a four spy of their own to try and even the odds. Man, what a great round from Glaive. Oh, oh. oh yeah, the slow mo. I you got to remember the slow mo. Man. Come on, respect the slow mo. Oh. Well. Okay, that's not a round I uh, had in uh, had planned for Astralis, but yeah, you know, sometimes you got to disrupt the schedule. And has that given them a breath of life? Let's remember the bonus round that NIP ran back on Nuke on the T side. They lose it with four Mac 10s. Astralis don't drop a round for like six after that. And I think they lose one more round in the entire game before closing it out. So, you know, not that that bonus round was a mistake or anything for NIP, right? Obviously they lose it, but you know, they had a good buy. They had three AKs and Astralis pick it up with Eco. And now, oh dear, has this, you know, put confidence back in Astralis. Has this solved the problem? Just, oh, he jiggles and you've got to commit with a swing uh, in that position when they're looking at you. He is going to go down and leave just a lone man in the B-bomb site. A MAC-10 is not the gun for this position, but he could get flashed in from device in the spawn. Glaive is holding utility of his own, but they're already watching it. They're already pushed up. He's going to go wide. Oh, no! my goodness. Glaive couldn't have gone any more wrong if you asked for it to. And now... Well, the response from Astralis is a two-man spray down from Device. Twist and Lecro out. Just leaves Device and Dupree to get this site back and to defuse this bomb. Very low on the nip side, though. Rez and Knock. They're going to use what utility they have left. That was in the form of a smoke. It's going to be dropped towards Coffin. Device is, well, has backed off. There's the retake as it stands. Knock with the first peak actually lands the shot on Device, but Dupree ahead of the ball game. And that's going to be a defuse for Astralis? Yeah, yes. should be fine. Should be fine. No. Uh, yeah, it will be fine. It's going to be no problem for Astralis. It's always that second of doubt. But yeah, there's just a pure doubt there for a second. Either way, yeah, Astralis uh, back in this. And we talked about this on Nuke, about letting Astralis get their foot back in the door, whether it's, you know, a, a super series of rounds or more so just finding one and that just giving them the gumption to go for things that uh, Astralis knows they're capable of doing. Yeah, Device, they owe so much to him, man. Like, that double spray down through the smoke was phenomenal. And that kickstarts that entire retake. You know, he deals with the only two players that really had any health for the NIP side. If that's a two-on-four, and it stays a two-on-four, Astralis likely don't even attempt the round, right? They just back out and save. But with Device getting those two kills and leaving it down to the two low HP players on Nip, Astralis are able to steal that one away. NIP do not want a repeat of Nuke here in the third and final map of this series. Once again, they're sporting a lead and it's Astralis trying to grind their way back into this map. NIP setting up for a mid push here. They've got Rez holding on to any banana regression that Astralis might look to bring in. I think that was his deeg that we just heard spamming off a couple of shots and that actually might spur Astralis on to go for a push. They hear the deagle firing from bottom banana. And so they've responded by taking this top B aggression. There's always a chance that they go a bit further forward as well and are maybe even available on a fast rotation or a flank, depending on the speed of which NIP look to hit this site. The bomb gets dropped there by device. Trades are in courtesy of Dupree. And some important trades at that. That regains control yeah. of the bomb for Astralis that keeps top mid under lock and key and denies that weapon getting retrieved. And ninth round now graces the board for the day. This was 11-6, and I, I have a scary feeling that Astralis might just sweep this half, right? Like, like you said, you know, obviously, 
you know, when we talk about, oh, yeah, letting Astralis back in, it's not even like an active mistake from NIP. Obviously, they lose to an eco, which isn't great, but, you know, eventually Astralis are going to get around anyway. It's just the way in which they get these rounds, and this round specifically that they get for free, it feels like, you know, with Glaive getting four kills off a 5-7, a that just gives Astralis this, like, breath of fresh air, and, and you know, they just fall back into these cold, calculated killers, these robots going through the motions. The Molotov's in Banana, the utility is good. Rez gets grenaded down to 10 and he walks into a molly. Nowhere is safe when Astralis oh, are in the man. server and Device is gonna show us why. Finding a second kill onto Nork. Everywhere NIP go, Astralis find a frag and that is not changing. Yep, Plopsky not making the play there. Glaive's gonna take him out, just Lecro and Twist. What are they gonna do? What can they do better yet? I mean, this is a round that's not even past the minute mark yet left on the clock, so. Not sure it could have gone much more wrong here. Bomb down on T-Ramp, and they're split between the two sites. Good luck. Yeah, Twist is just trying to take the, the one VX at this B site. He has no information as to how many players are here. He's expecting two, and there are two. Whether or not he's expecting this double-layered peak of Zipex and Glaive, I very much doubt it. I would go with no. <laughs> and look at the self-restraint from Astralis. Now, if this was your standard pug, of course, someone's pushing that, guaranteed. 5v2, they're going for it. Yeah. Hunt them down. But that's how you let NIP back in. And so this is the right call for Astralis. This is, you know, the resilience that we expect from the best team in the world. And the kills are there. They still haven't even seen the second man in the boost. So why would they be ready for him? They're not. Zimnix is indeed ready for them. And Astralis converts a 10th round on the CT side. That is indeed four in a row. And that is an eco now for NIP to put Astralis up to 11. Yeah, Nip with their hopes held high, and that's currently escaping them. Yeah, it's, it's important, you know, not to like fall out of your seat when you're when you're holding a lead like this. 11-6, and NIP, they need to muster up something moving forward. It's Tech Nines and armor in this one, or no armor really, only on two, and they're the Deeks anyway, so. Very dangerous to go back to Banana after the masterclass of utility Astralis just showed us, and they're gonna go back for it with more Molotovs by the second. Nowhere is safe. So Popsky will just cower in the corner for now. Let the rest of NIP work the apartments. Yeah, you'll see that bomb slowly but surely rotating back down through mid to rejoin these guys at the B-bomb site. And so Nork maybe just looking to sell the fake with some utility getting thrown in from Lecro down at the bottom of mid to uh, smoke off the long side of the map. And with Nork emerging, you might be able to keep these three players here. And so that gives a temporary 4v2 the way of NIP at the B site and temporary in every sense of the word. Wow. Now it's a 1v2 for Nork. And that is a stellar hold from Glaive and Zipex. They managed to overcome that. They make it look really easy when it's anything but... Okay. Nork, nice dig shot there to remove one, but he still has so many more players to worry about in this round, even at the B site. Two lovely, crisp dig shots from Nork, but he needed five if he wanted to pick that round up. Astralis now tying this up at 11 to 11. And this could be a repeat of Nuke. I do think, you know, when we get into these long hauls, when we get into these games where Astralis start to claw their way back into it, for these guys, it's like another day in the office, right? Yeah. This is what they're used to. They're used to these longer games. They, 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 they're cut out to have the resilience and be able to fall back on their game plan. And for NIP, the thing that always gets me a bit worried is when this starts to happen, you can almost feel the momentum getting sucked out of this mm. team. Yeah, and the real thing here too is if I look at it and I'm seeing Astralis, you know, they're bouncing back, and that's kind of to be expected from a team that has, regardless of the current form, has seen just about everything that Counter-Strike has to offer. And these teams have already thrown just about everything they have, including the book, just trying to take Astralis down a notch or two from number one for the longest time. So plenty of experience, plenty of veterans here for the Astralis side. And it's showing right now, it's glistening. Yeah, device on this AWP is always an exciting player to watch on the CT side of Inferno. 
so fast, so consistent, but not forcing the issue. Wrapping back towards short side with the AWP, but Banana once again has been held by Astralis. It seems like we never get NIP, you know, getting uh, this position for free. They've always got to lose a man to get up top beat. And right now, Glaive is holding a, a very aggressive line down Banana, allowing for a rotation from Astralis. And IP, they still want to take Banana while they take mid. The bomb is still dra uh, dropped down bottom ramp as they wait for that to be uh, going on later in the round once that utility is expired. But that's the question. Do they have the players alive to even take Banana? Because right now, Device and Magisk finding early advantages for Astralis. Two kills for free. Well-oiled machine is what we often call these Danes, and for good reason. In full control of this map, of this round, and of this half, it's been a comeback for Astralis. Five in a row has put them to from 11-6 to 11-11. And this round, everything about it screams Astralis. It would have to be an impeccable recovery from NIP. And look at both players looking at apartments. They know where NIP are coming. They have the middle area. And so that rotate back from B is coming into the A site. If it's even needed, device is ready. The drop coming through. The flash is good. Pushes him behind the pillow. Oh. And Dupree can't get anything done. They line up. Device gets one D out. He drops a second. And the bomb gets home delivered. Majisk is here for the third. And Astralis just have no problem shutting down every execute for NIP. They only have two players on the site. They don't need any more. Yeah, device not forcing a fight right there. He backs off. Gets himself a little bit of a buffer. And quickly switches to his deagle. Good stuff from Deve. Device, I'm sure he prefers to be called that this day and age. Wait, there's just, it's not going well for the ninjas. Anything they're trying here, whether it's individuals on Astralis or team play, they just do not have an answer to the Danes. Tactical timeout coming in for Nip. So you can be assured that Threat is looking to clean it up a little bit. This would be devastating to have lost two maps in the yeah. same fashion. Yeah, it almost felt like it was just definitely going to happen. And that's a sad reality. You, I mean, Harry said the other round, it feels like you can see it. You're getting sucked out of NIP. And yeah, right? Like they've just been silent on this T side. I'd love to see a B execute for NIP. Obviously, it had have to be late round considering how good this utility is down banana. But NIP, they, they just take mid and they lose players before they can back up and go for a late B play. So it's all about staying alive in the first 20 seconds. Sometimes you just got to sit down and spawn and go, guys, stop dying. <laughs> and that's what it feels like for NIP, right? They just don't have trades. They're, they're getting picked up by the AWP. The utility down banana is constantly finding picks. Like, where, where are the flat, you know, five-on-five five B executes for NIP? Maybe in the future, but for now, it's just eco. Oh, and device a problem again inside of the bomb site. While they do do some damage, it's not around Astralis. 13 to 11. Very much back in the swing of things now over on this CT side. And yeah, I mean, that's the thing, right? Like for Nip, they always seem to have these strong starts. And, and when things are going their way, they look really good, do NIP, right? When they're feeling it, when all the momentum's in their favor, of course they're looking great. But, uh, you know, the, the kind of hallmark of a great team is one that can get knocked back and ta can take stumbles and yeah. then still perseveres and gets through. And that is what makes this Astralis squad so deadly. And we're just not getting to see that same form from Nip. It feels like the moment things start to turn against Ooh. them, when the momentum... Oh, look at it. Go. Where do you go? Yeah, this yeah. is horrible. You're just on fire there. And sometimes Ooh. we get knocked down, you've just got to get back up again. Plotsky looking to do that great grenade place there as he does look to capitalize on it just a little bit by holding on to banana control, potentially why Nip figures out what they want to do in this round. Surely weren't expecting a kill that early on, but still four on four. Yeah, I mean, this is the best situation that NIP have had in a while. I'd love them to just flat out exec B right here, but that kill, well, that changes everything. Now, Astralis might have to just rotate a player back towards A, and, and with the bomb and banana, NIP could just commit. It's a gamble for Astralis, no matter what they do, but that's a massive frag. Dupree's opened up A. That can allow for these two players at B to stay here. So NIP's execute is still going in to a heavy-handed Astralis with an AWP posted on the angle. The flash pushes Device back. Molotov oh. not going to go down. Zipnik's removed from the fight. Device on his own in the back of the site. Quick shot with the Molotov. It's going to land at his feet. He can't smoke it. Oh he's got to smoke dear. them, and he's found two. Closing it out into the one-on-one. -on -one. Dupree versus Lecro. 
Uh oh, Dupree Ooh. could be a problem. He tries to walk close to the smoke, oh. gets even closer to the fire, and it's Lecro that falls. A good hold from Device. You have to look at Device Victory in that round is the, is the one that holds it together, is the glue for this defense. And yes, Jeez. a victory lap. Oh, he's such a little menace. I love it. Dupree just really letting an IP sit in this, right? Oh. And I like that. You know, you really want to be play, playing the mind games at this point in time because I think Dupree can kind of sense that NIP are getting frustrated at this point in time, right? Yeah. Now, NIP, uh, they get that round so close. And I think, in a, in a way, that, that could be the one, you know, the, the straw that breaks the camel's back, as it were, right? Because... All they're going to have to remember this series by is a series where consistently they had these situations where they could have regained control, where they could have even closed it out in their favor. And every single time we approach these swing, very, very important rounds, Nip just seemed to be nowhere to be found. And Astralis turning it on its head once again, winning that one out in a 1v1 with a stellar 2K from Device to get them there in a situation where really like even getting away with one felt like it was a great job from him, right? The fact that he overstays his welcome and is able to put up those kills on the board make it doable for the day. It's just so sad that after hitting A and, and dying in mid and losing picks for so many rounds, NIP finally go for a BX sec in the one round that Astralis have it stacked. Like, it doesn't get more unlucky than that. And Device is there in the center, yeah, right? They've been dealing with him over at A for so He's long. He's been mid forever. Just, Surprise. Oh. Either way, big grenades stuff. still coming out here, landing all over the ninjas and pajamas side on this banana hold. Plopsky already down to 18. Rez on 62. And just knock over there on the other side of the map, and he doesn't even have apartments control. He's looking towards top mid just to make sure that there's no sneaky beaky business from the Astralis side. Zipex with the first scalp in the round. Ooh, that molly. Oh, they can't pass past it, and Zipnix just peeks on the edge of it. Smoke down at their feet, but he's going to fight in front and finds another double. Spray is good from Nork. He sees the traces. He gets a response, but he's going to have to pre-fire to find this kill. Good luck. Running low on the ammo. Reload coming through, and the plant faked out, but 20 seconds means you don't have time to play games. Flash is in, and he's already given away his position. Astralis just needs to spin on the spot. And ever since NIP found 11, it has been flawless for Astralis. A nine round comeback. They're looking for 10, and it might just be around the corner. And the only thing that would make this more complete is if the ninjas picked up one more round and then lost, so that we yeah. could continue on a 16 12 streak of games here. Yeah, it would be all three of them. And, you know, obviously, think back to NIP on Vertigo. They took that win initially. They they opened up this series. It's been Astralis coming back tooth and nail, fighting in this in this game. And even with NIP leading Nuke as well for the longest time. So the resilience is showing, as we've often said. And now they've had enough. They have truly had enough. Dupree wants to send these ninjas home, and he is doing it. Oh, God. Trade is in. Device of the AWP. Bomb dropped in T-spawn. Astralis are pushing it. This is all over the place. And even closer to being all over. Twist closest to the bomb. Zipex wisely tucking in. He knows that he's holding this B angle. He's holding this B push. And oh. it just isn't fair. Life isn't fair, Twist. Knock by himself. 46 HP. With that peak, he's going to call in the boys. Glaive has radioed in on the comms. Here he is. Come get him for the taking. Yeah, I love it from Glaive as well. Just doesn't even repeat. Goes, yep, I want to end this series. Let's just end this series. And he does. Device coming in from mid to close.